We all change in many ways as we go through life. I'm a much different person than I was 10, 15, 20 years ago. But when it comes to our bodies, it's pretty important that everything stays about the same, moment to moment, day to day, no matter what wild things we go through in life. If your blood pressure gets too low, you might pass out. If your blood pressure gets too high, it can damage your blood vessels over time and increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. If the calcium levels in your blood get too low, it can make your bones weaker over time. If your sugar levels get too high, it can damage your blood vessels or cause you to go into hyperglycemic shock. But luckily, our bodies have a process for keeping all of those things right where they need to be. And that process is called homeostasis. Favorite metaphor for homeostasis. I'm going to use balancing the ruler as a metaphor for homeostasis and take you through the four steps of homeostasis. The first idea is the idea of set point. The set point is going to be the ideal position of the ruler or the ideal internal condition of the body, such as 120 over 80 for our blood pressure. For the ruler, the set point is the ruler being actually straight up like this. That's kind of the ideal position of it. Now, if you notice when I'm balancing it, very rarely is it perfectly straight up. It's almost always tilted slightly to the side or slightly like this. And that's a big idea in this is that even though the set point's the ideal condition, it's hardly ever right at the set point. It's always slightly off, but we're always correcting it back to the set point. Okay, to keep this ruler balanced then, there's three steps that I have to take. The first step is that I have to sense it. In this case, I'm viewing it with my eyes and I'm also feeling it with my fingers. And so I can detect, hey, this is the position of it. I can see that it's slanted over. I can feel that the weight's more on one side than the other. So step one is to detect it. We can't make a change until we detect what's wrong. The second step is my brain has to make a decision. It's gotta compare its position to the set point. The process of making that comparison is called integration. So right now my brain has to say, okay, it's tilted to the side. That's too far that way compared to the set point of this. And so it's not where it needs to be. That happens subconsciously. I don't have to think, hey, the ruler is not right. I need to correct it. It happens faster than that. It happens faster than that with our blood pressure and all these other things as well. After my brain, which is the integrator or control center, makes a comparison between the current position and the set point, we're gonna use an effector to correct it. In the case of the ruler, the effector is me moving my hand to correct and make that position back to the set point. So it's leaning over to the side like this, and then I make a correction, and it's back up to the set point where it needs to be. Any homeostasis process in the body is gonna follow this set of steps that you see right here. We call this whole process a negative feedback loop, and the reason it's negative is because we're always making an opposite change of where the condition is. So for example, if this is leaning too far that way, I'm gonna make a change to make it the opposite. Or if it's leaning too far this way, I'll make a change in the opposite direction to correct it. So that's what we call it a negative feedback loop. Now let's head to the whiteboard and look at two examples of how the body actually uses homeostasis to keep internal conditions the same and to keep us alive, which is pretty important. Our first example is blood pressure. Now, as we go through this, don't worry about getting every single little detail of these negative feedback loops, but focus on this whole process of sensor, integrator, and effector to get a variable back to its set point. Now, the set point for blood pressure we're gonna use is about 120 over 80 mmHg. That's just a measure of the pressure when your heart beats and then when it relaxes. Now let's say something happens and that blood pressure gets a little bit too high. Maybe you get stressed out about something. The first thing we have to do, remember, is to sense whatever that blood pressure is. In our bodies, we have two places that detect that blood pressure. One's in the aorta, which is a blood vessel that comes out of the heart, and the second's in the carotid artery, which is a blood vessel in our neck. So those are gonna sense what that blood pressure is using a stretch receptor, basically. If the pressure's high, the blood vessels expand a little bit, and they detect that. So then the aorta and carotid artery will send a signal up to the brain through a nerve and the medulla in the brain is going to compare that blood pressure reading to the set point and say, okay, is this too high? Is it too low? Is it just right? Well, in this case, it's going to say, okay, that's too high. And so the medulla oblongata in the brain is going to then make a decision and it's going to send signals to other parts of the body effectors to tell them what to do. Two main effectors here in blood pressure regulation. The first one is it's going to tell your heart to be slower and not to beat as hard. In other words, your heart rate and contraction strength are going to decrease, and that's gonna lower your blood pressure back down. It's also gonna tell your blood vessels to dilate. In other words, your blood vessels will expand a little bit, which is gonna reduce the pressure that that fluid is putting on the walls of the blood vessel. Both those changes are gonna to work to lower your blood pressure back down 
to what that set point is, 120 over 80. Now let's look at the bottom loop. A misconception that a lot of students have is that the top loop here is negative feedback because it got too high, we're gonna bring it back down so they think negative. And the bottom loop is positive feedback. It got too low, we'll bring it back up, that's positive. That is a lie from the devil itself. In reality, both of these are negative feedback because if it gets too high, it does the opposite, brings it down. If it gets too low, it still is the opposite, brings it back up. And so those are both negative feedback. We'll look at positive feedback in another video, but positive feedback basically is when it, something changes, the body makes that change even greater, which is not at all what's happening here in these negative feedback loops. Now let's look at the bottom loop. The first few steps here are gonna be the same. First, we have to sense it. That'll be the aorta and carotid artery. Then we have to compare it to the set point. That's still gonna be the medulla and the brain. But the effectors will be different because the medulla is gonna make a comparison, say, oh, the blood pressure, is too low. And so that's gonna cause the heart rate and strength of contraction to increase. Your heart will be faster and harder. And it's gonna cause your blood vessels to constrict. If your blood vessels constrict, there's a higher pressure between the fluid and the walls of the blood vessel. Both of those changes are gonna raise your blood pressure back up to the set point. So your blood pressure is constantly fluctuating. Get a little bit too high, your body brings it back down. It gets a little bit too low, your body brings it back up. And it's always kind of hovering around that set point, but rarely exactly 120 over 80. If you take your blood pressure right now, it's probably not gonna be the exact same as it is if you take your blood pressure a few minutes later, but it should be around the same point no matter when you take it throughout the day. Our second example is body temperature. I'm gonna work through this one a little bit quicker. Our set point for our body is about 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's say your body temperature gets a little bit too high. So the nerve cells in your brain and skin are gonna detect that temperature or sense that temperature sensor. Then those are gonna send signals up to the hypothalamus. It's part of your brain and it's gonna compare that temperature to the set point, what it wants to keep your body temperature at. Since your body temperature is too high, it's gonna make a decision to send signals to some effectors in the body to bring that temperature back down. The main two effectors here will be to tell the sweat glands in your skin to release sweat. And when that sweat evaporates, that'll bring your body temperature back down. And also to cause your blood vessels to dilate. That's gonna cause more blood to get to the outer parts, the extremities of your body, so it can release some of that extra heat to the atmosphere. Now, if your body temperature gets too low, we'll go through the same first two steps. First, nerve cells in your brain and skin are gonna detect or sense what that temperature is. Those will send signals to the hypothalamus in the brain to compare the temperature to the set point. It's gonna see that that temperature is lower than it needs to be. And then the brain's gonna send signals to your muscles to cause them to shiver, which will warm you up. And the brain will send signals to the blood vessels in your body to tell them to constrict, to keep that blood closer to the internal parts of your body so it doesn't lose energy to the surroundings. Those changes will raise your body temperature back up toward the set point, and then you're good to go again. Okay, quick recap. Remember that every internal condition that you need to keep the same in the body follows this homeostatic negative feedback loop. There's a set point, an ideal condition. Whenever that condition gets too high or too low, first your body will sense that condition. Then the body will integrate it or compare it to the set point. The integrator or control center usually is the brain, but it can be other organs depending on which feedback loop we're looking at. And then the body will initiate effectors in order to correct that condition back to the set point. Hey, thanks for watching. There's a link in the description for cards that you can either print out or you can just manipulate on a slide to organize those into the homeostasis feedback loops, which is really good practice for mastering this idea of the negative feedback loop. Don't forget to keep all of your internal conditions inside your body the same. That's some good, she's got better footwork than me.